We talked about the Memphis Tigers. Well, we are going to continue that discussion. Ryan Silverfield, in his second season, they went 8-3 and three last year. Got a bowl win for the first time in forever. That's right. I mean, just it, since, since they beat up on BYU in the Boca Raton Bowl or whatever years ago. Uh, went 12-2 and two the season before that. That was their Cotton Bowl year. The win total sits at 8. Uh, it's juiced at minus 110 to the over, minus 120 to the under. SP Plus and FPI both have them going 8-4, and four, so it's right on the number. Um, it went 2-8 and eight against the spread last year, so for all the gamblers out there, did not quite live up to expectations as the season wore along. Uh, the offense, definitely going to miss quarterback Brady White. Uh, Arizona transfer quarterback Grant Gannell, it looks like he is going to be the starter, um, but you never know. I mean, right. there's there's four different guys. Like, Peter Parrish from LSU has transferred in. Like, they, they got dudes. Uh, they got eight starters back on offense. They don't have the playmakers that they had under Norvell. That's what worries me about this team. This offense... I got worries. Like, with, with Johns, the offensive coordinator, he was so used to these guys that were speed demons. Ultra-athletic. Yes. Like... Some of the fastest guys in the country, not just in the conference and, and not just on the team. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and I don't know that they've the got those. No, I mean, there's wide receiver Calvin Austin. Like, they, well, they, they got returned some dudes. a few guys, but they, Silverfield's not going to recruit like Norvell did. He's just not. He's, I, will, I will tell you this. He has, done, he has done well as far as the recruiting rankings go. That's fine. I don't think he's been able to find the guys, yeah. right? And that's it. And now we're only two years into this, and we've been dealing with COVID, so it is what it is. Mike McIntyre's defense uh, improved in 2020. They allowed 557 yards per game average over the first five games. I do think that's where and, they will improve. They will. Yeah. I think they'll, they're going to take significant steps backwards in offense. I think they will take significant steps forward on defense. Listen to what they averaged over the last six games. Yeah. Only gave up 332 yards per game over the last six. Uh, eight starters back means it should resemble the last six I, I games. I almost want to spend five minutes going back and looking at that schedule, though, because oh, yeah. that that is a – this is a case of played a lot of bad teams at the back end of this thing. They did play Cincinnati and UCF early. Early. And, well, and not Arkansas just that. State. Ar- yeah. Remember that Arkansas State game where Arkansas yeah. State put like 800 yards of offense Oh, yeah. Out. I mean, it was so. crazy. But that was the first however many games of McIntyre. They did play True. SMU early as oh, well. Oh, no, no, no. And that team so. was not built to play defense. Correct. Let's Let's get this thing right, okay? These high-powered, high-speed offenses – None of them play great defense. Yes, because it's just not possible that you're just throwing guys at the you know bodies in, in in front of bullets is all you're trying to do, trying to slow things down. Oh yeah, you're not actually stopping anybody at when you play that style of football. They I are think their style is going to change. I think it is too. I think it's I think it's going to change a lot. I do think that you are going to be able to tell what this team is after the first four games. They've got well, at yeah. Arkansas State, Mississippi State, and UTSA. That's before they ever even get into the conference. But, you know, your Power 5 team, Mississippi State, you got them at home. You got UTSA at home, who is a vastly improved team under Jeff Trailer. Arkansas State, you're going on the road to Jonesboro. Butch Jones has got a bunch of guys returning. Well, that was a good team last year. Yeah, they were... You know, I mean, they, they went like three and eight, but they could. No, they were they were team, competitive though. with everybody. Oh yeah. yeah, I was about to say yeah. no. I, you can't look at that record. That yeah. this team, that team's not going to be afraid of Memphis. Oh no, of course not. Especially not at home. No. So no. It, I, if they can win, honestly, they need to go three and one in those first four yeah. in order to get to the eight. Yeah. Uh, I've got them going under the eight. I've got I minus going under the, I was going to ask you what was the odds again. Uh, under. Uh, under is minus one twenty. Over is minus one ten. So it's done a lot of difference. I would go. I would go under as well. I think um, this team is closer to six and six this year. I do too. I think they've got too many coin flip games, and I like SMU better than them, and I like Houston better than them. Those are they need to win both those games and all the rest of the coin flips to get them to eight. Yeah, I just don't think they can do it. I don't think they can either. I don't think they can either. So we will flip. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.